Good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to look at Chapter 14. It's installment buying, rule of 78, as well as credit cards or revolving um, charge cards, as they call it. So obviously there are a lot of terms. Uh, you'll need to know them again, such as down payment, amortization, installment loan. Um, so make sure you're familiar with those. Well, let's kind of hit some of the main topics in this chapter. So we looked at, or we're going to look at, installment buying, which is closed-end credit, compared to revolving credit, which is open-ended, and, and what that means. And when you kind of think about closed-end credit, it means it has a dead, it's, a, it's got a termination time. Normally 60 months, because you're buying a car, if you're buying you know, a boat, depending on what. But you have a set in that that payment needs to be received. Compared to your revolving credit, which is going to be your credit card, which can go on continuously because you can keep on adding to it. So some of the key, key things to pay attention to is your amount financed is actually your, your cash price minus your down payment. So if you finance it through, if you go and you go to the Honda dealer and, and you pay a down payment, but you finance the rest, well, you have to take the cash price minus how much you actually pay to be the amount financed that you're taking a loan out of. The amount that your finance charge will be is a, the same thing as your interest rate or your interest charged, uh, which is the total of all monthly payments minus the amount financed. Um, and we'll go through these practically. And then your deferred payment price is your total of all monthly payments plus your down payment. Uh, then your APR, which is uh, Table 1 or 14.1, um, and how you figure that out is you take your finance charge, what we figured out here, divided by our amount financed, multiply that by 100, and then we look that up in the table. And so if we know our period is 60 months, then we'll go over until we can find uh, where our number falls into. And the government said that it should always be within a quarter of a percent. So it will be between you know 10.5 and 10.75, uh, or 14.5 and 14.75. So it'll be within a quarter percent. So uh, there's a couple ways to figure out how to calculate that monthly payment. You can either add your finance charge with your amount financed and divide it by the payment, which is our formula, or we can look it up in Table 14.2 where what we do is with the amount of our loan, we can divide that by a thousand. We get a quotient, we get a set number, and then we look up in the table our periods and our interest rate, and that factor will then be multiplied by the quotient to get our actually monthly payments. So, a lot of talk, let's get to the nitty gritty and actually try some problems out. So I'm looking at page 3.5 in the book, it's the extra practice problem because the practice problem should be done for you um, and so you know how to do it. But it says with this sign um, that we read in the uh, advertisement section of the newspaper, it says figure out the amount financed, figure out the finance charge, the deferred payment price, the APR, and then actually the monthly payment by formula. So just looking at this alone. So let's do that. So we know our amount financed is our selling price minus our down payment. So it says sales price or our selling price is a dollar under fourteen thousand. So thirteen nine ninety nine. So thirteen nine ninety nine minus our down payment of fourteen eighteen or eighty will get us our amount financed. So when I plug that into the calculator, I get. Twelve thousand five hundred nineteen. So this is our amount financed. So that's the loan that I'm taking out. It's a twelve thousand five hundred nineteen dollar loan. So our finance charge is our monthly payment of two ninety five times our number of payments, which is sixty. So if I do that, it's actually seventeen thousand. $700. So it's going to cost us $17,700 just after we've paid our down payment. But to figure out how much of that is going to be finance charge or actually the interest, so our $17,700 minus our $12,519, 
So if I minus that, I'm going to be paying $5,181 in interest. So that's our finance charge. Well, our deferred payment price is our monthly payment of $17,700 plus our down payment of $1,480. So I have to add those two together. So $1,480 plus $17,700 is $19,180. So if we thought $14,000 was expensive, well, we're actually paying $19,000 for the car by the time we actually have it all paid off. Um, and then it says figure out the APR by using the table. Well, what we do is we take B divided by A, so 5,181 divided by 12,519. So 5,181 divided by 12,519 is 0.41385. We multiply that by 100. So 41.39. And then we turn and look it up in table 14.1. And I'm going down to period 60. I'm going over until I find 41.39. And I found 41.17 which is 14.5, and I found 41.9. So this falls in between. So it's in between 14.5 and 14.75%. That is pretty pricey. So, and our last one is figure out our payments by doing the formula. Well, we know B is 5,181. A is um, 12,000. 51.9, divide that by 60, which is our terms. So 5181 plus 12.9, which is the exact same thing as our monthly payment of 17,700 divided by 60 equals, imagine that, 295, which is our same monthly payment. So that's how we do at least that section. Uh, the next section is actually on paying off, uh, it's called Rule of 78, paying off the loans beforehand. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the six steps of the Rule of 78 uh, because it ties into the, the U.S. rule that we learned previously about paying off loans early and getting that credit or that rebate of that interest that's owed back to us. So what we have to do is we have to calculate the balance of the loan outstanding we then calculate the total finance charge, what it should be. We figure out the number of periods or payments that are remaining. We then look up that in table 14.3. We calculate our rebate, which then allows us to calculate our payoff. It's easier understood when we actually look through an example. So I'm turning to 348 in the book. We're going to do practice problem 14-2A. And it says we take out a loan for $6,900. It's a 12-month loan, and we repaid it after five months. And we've been making $690 monthly payments until that. So we have to calculate the balance of that loan outstanding. So basically, what was my loan amount total for? Well, initially we took the loan out for $6,900, but if I do all these monthly payments, it's going to be $8,280. Well, we paid it off at the end of five, and so through five, we made five payments to 690. So we have to subtract this to figure out how much we had left to pay off. So after doing the math, it looks like it would be $4,830, which is left. We then have to calculate our total finance charge. So if this is how much we're going to pay after 12 months, the 8280. Well, we have to subtract our loan of 6900 So after doing the subtraction, we see that it's, we're going to pay $1,380 in interest. Okay. So our number of payments remaining. Well, it's a 12-month loan. We've paid it off hypothetically after five. 
So we have seven months of interest, hypothetically, that we've paid that we need to get back. So I'm going to turn to table 14.3 and look up 7 and then look up 12. So because to calculate the rebate, I need to know of this interest that I would pay throughout the year, I have to multiply it by our 7 over 12. But this is looked up in the table. And when I look it up in the table, it says that it's 28 over 78. So I have to multiply that. 1380 times 28 over 78. So 28 divided by 78. 0.3589 times 1380 equals $495.38. Okay. Well, what do I have to do with that? Well, this is my rebate. This is my interest rebate. Well, to calculate what we had to pay off, we have to take this 4838, which is our outstanding balance, minus our $495.38. And then subtract that. So I would have to pay off $4,334.62 if I paid it off after the end of the fifth month. So that's kind of how you can calculate what your rebate would be, what your payoff would be. Let's continue on with the chapter. Now we get into the charge cards or the credit cards, and it wants us to calculate the finance charge on the previous month's balance. So if we took out a loan in the book, it said for $8,000 to buy a dining table, what would I do? Well, we're going to actually do the example off of 351. It's the extra practice problem number 1, 14-3A. Uh, so it says, if we purchased a $300 desk, so we're going to buy a $300 desk with monthly payments of $80, or of $20, and a charge of one and a quarter interest after two months, what's outstanding. So two months, point one two five interest. So month one, balance due. $300, because that's what we bought it for. Our interest is going to be 300 times 0 0.0125, which when I do that in the calculator, is $3.75. So my monthly payment is 20. So what actually goes to the principal? Well, 20 minus 0.375 is... Um, 16 and a quarter. So 16 and a quarter actually is going against the 300 because we had to pay off the interest of 375. So when I subtract that, my balance outstanding after the first month is $283.75. Now this is actually called an amortization table. This is where you figure out your schedule of payments. Um, I do this with student loans, with mortgages, you can figure out what happens and how you can actually reduce it by changing your monthly payment. So, side note, that's a good thing to use. So, month two, and you can do this, you can set up it pretty easy in Excel. This works out perfect to, to just run in Excel. So, $283.75. My interest is now going to decrease because I have to use that number and multiply that. I get $3.54. So now we have less going to interest. Our monthly payment stays the same, but we should have more in our balance. So actually $16.45 is now going to pay off our principal compared to, so 20 cents more, which adds up if you have a home mortgage or depending on what you're using. So after two months, we have a balance of $267 and 30 cents.
which is kind of odd because, well, hey, if we've paid 40 bucks and it costs us 300, shouldn't we have 260? But because of interest, we have seven dollars and thirty cents still remaining. So that's how you do the month balance one. The other one is how most credit cards do it is to calculate your daily balance. And they, they say there's five steps to do that. You have to calculate your daily balance first. Then you multiply that by the number of days that it stayed that same. Then you add all that cumulative balance together and divide by the number of billing days. And then you multiply that by your finance charge. So the best way to see it is in number two of the extra practice problem. And it says, let's walk through it. Um, it says on 821, you had the billing date of $400, okay? We didn't do anything until the 24th, which is three days later. 24 minus 21 is three. And so, for three days, we had a balance of $400. So if I multiply that together, because I'm doing that, I get 1200 okay? Then it says on the 24th, I made a payment of $100, okay? So on the 24th, I made a payment of $100, so it brings my balance down. So my balance is now $300, and it stays that way until the 31st. So 31 minus 24 is 7. So 7 times 300 is 2100, okay? Then it says on the 31st, I bought something from Staples for $60. So my new balance is 360, and it stays that way for five days. Okay, so five times 360, half of 3600 is 1800. Okay, and then it says that I got a cash advanced for $200, and that was. Oh, actually no, I, I apologize. I paid $20. Sorry. And that was for five days. And then it said, sorry, then I get my cash advance uh, for $200, which bring my balance up to 540. And we don't know when it stops, but we actually do. It says a 31 day billing cycle. So I check in chapter seven and I add August 21st, 31, and it brings me to September 21st. So, which is 11 days away. So it's 11 days at $540 balance, which would be $59.40. So I add all these together and see what I get. So I got $5940, 1700 $1,800, $2,100, $1,200. So I got $12,740. I divide that by my billing days, which is number four, divided by 31. So my average daily balance is 410.97. Okay, now my finance charge, they told me the problem is 2%. So I have to multiply that by 0 0.02. So we'd have an $8 and 22 cent finance charge. So hopefully that helps you work through some of the problems of chapter 14. And if you have any questions, feel free to email. Otherwise, I look forward to working with you on the next chapter. Thanks.